Please, everybody, welcome Hampton Yount. <laughs> Wait, no. <laughs> Way less. You're wrong. Um, hi. My name is Hampton Yunt. It's the dumbest name I've ever heard. So, how do you think I feel living with that every day of my life? My name is Hampton Parker Yunt. It's the whitest name. It's the second whitest name I've actually found. The first whitest name is Mitt Romney. <laughs> then Hampton Parker Yunt, then Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> and we're the holy triumvirate. We just hang around together. We just do white guy shit, you know, pollute lakes, uh, <laughs> take land from people, you know? <laughs> Mitt Romney will like uh, grab a girl's throat and you know, go too hard. It's weird, it's weird. It's, it's like me and uh, Eggs Benedict, that's what I call uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. We, like, we have to pull him off. No, 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 no. But... It's just my, my group. That's what I do. Um, this is such a weird set. <laughs> I don't know how to get comfortable. Um, there have to be people who have their birthday on 9-11 for whatever it's worth. And of that group of people, there has to have been at least one guy who got up that day, had no idea what was going on. And his friend calls him, his friend's like, oh my God, do you know what's happening today? He's like, yes. <laughs> so. It's the end of that joke. I don't have any more. I will not write any more. <laughs> but I think it's a good uh, palate cleanser for the beginning. <laughs> so there's no God, and I was thinking about that the other day. <laughs> How that sucks. Uh, I was raised really Catholic, and I, like, I didn't masturbate until I was 19, because I just thought, like, the minute you masturbate, you go to hell. Like, a trap door goes under, you're like, I'm dying! You just fall down. So I remember the night I became an atheist, which is me in bed at night, just like rock hard erection, just like, uh, bruh, duh, it's probably bullshit. Uh. And then that's how it all happened, man. That's how it happened. I just don't think you should force you, like, you, you can believe whatever you want. Don't force it on anybody. Like, I, like a week ago, somebody put under my windshield wiper, not gonna say who, put a picture of a dead baby underneath my windshield wiper. It was like a Christian group. And I was like, I, I, okay, I don't need coffee now. <laughs> like, and it was, a, it was an anti-abortion pamphlet, I think. Like, I didn't check. That'd be weird if that was a pro-abortion pamphlet. Like, like, yeah, dead baby. Like, what do you think? Like, you interested? Wanna try? <laughs> It was an anti-abortion pamphlet, I think, and I didn't read, like, the, the cover, it just made me laugh before I threw it off my car, and it, it said, uh, abortion kills three lives every second! And I say it like that, because I had, like, five exclamation points, and, like, a bunch of frowny faces, like, yeah, you get it! And I was like, wait, I remember always hearing that fact, a person is born every second. Are you saying without abortion, four people would be born every second? Thank God for abortion! <laughs> Like, that's the greatest pro-argument for abortion I've ever heard. I fucking hate people. I just feel bad for abortion doctors now, don't you? Like, having to keep up with that crazy workload. Like, I feel it's like an I Love Lucy where she's in the chocolate factory, like, trying to kill all the babies. Whoa! 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 These babies are everywhere! <laughs> what a silly place. No one would get an abortion there. <laughs> Um, hi. <laughs> I was raised with like abstinence only sex education. I don't think that's a good idea. I, th I think that's why I'm fucked up. <laughs> I think that's why I'm screwed up. You know what I mean? Like I, the, the idea behind it is like, uh, you know, kids can't get pregnant if they're not having sex. Yes, much in the same way you could cure diarrhea by spackling your asshole shut <laughs> with wet cement. <laughs> it's like, hey man, how's that diarrhea treating you? You know what? It's all taken care of. <laughs> My insides are on fire and it, I'm crying a brown liquid, but none of that pesky diarrhea. <laughs> so feel pretty good. That's what I'm trying to say. It's, it's weird, like what people want to like pass on to their kids. It kind of fascinates me. Uh, my, my dad uh, cut up my dick 
When I was a baby. It wasn't recent. It's when he did it. It's when you caught me, old man. You caught me when I was a baby. I was weak, couldn't fight back. It's when you came at my dick. You try that shit now? You try and cut up my dick now, old man? Uh, ain't working out like that. You've taken too many slices from the deli, sir. No, on guard, how dare you? <laughs> I think it's so funny that that's still a thing, like we still circumcise babies. And it's like, you know, for the same reason, like every dad always has the same reason. It's like, I want his penis to look like mine. That's the most serial killer shit I've ever heard in my entire life. It's like, make that baby's penis look like my adult male penis. Why don't more things look like my weird dick? You vain, vain man. Pun Nintendo. I've sometimes people will be like, oh, it's cleaner, it's cleaner. What lazy parent is just like, hey, you know what? Just cut it off. I don't wanna be cleaning this kid's dick every, every morning, noon and night. He's just gonna get mud and twigs and sticks on it. Just cut off his dick. <laughs> cut up a part of his penis. <laughs> I think I sometimes like wonder like how I would raise my kids if I were to if any woman were to ever let me like come inside. But <laughs> if I were to have a kid, how would I raise my kids? And I came to the conclusion I would raise them Jewish, like really Jewish, like super Jewish, like Orthodox Jew. Just every day he's got to wear the hat, he's got to wear the cape and the curls, and just every day he's like get up, get up, you got to be Jewish, you got to be Jewish today, you got to go to temple, and like you know, drop them off and like you learn Hebrew, learn Hebrew every day. <laughs> for years and years, until he's about the age of eight or nine. And he's like, Dad, why, why, am, I, why am I Jewish and you're not Jewish? And I'll be like, because I think it's funny. <laughs> and he's like, well, I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't want to be Jewish if you're not going to be Jewish. I don't want to have to do this if you're not going to be Jewish. And then I get to go, boy, you Jews love to complain. <laughs> Which is <laughs> just a fun joke about indoctrination. <laughs> I was told this was a Palestinian audience. Is, <laughs> is it going well? Um, I, uh, I think I would, I would believe in the Greek and Roman gods, like if I had a choice. That's, I, I grew up reading about those stories. That always made a lot of sense to me. The Greek and Roman gods were all related to each other and they would just fuck each other and fuck over each other and have like w weird murder revenge plots and like turn into animals and fuck each other. <laughs> like they were just like, if rednecks fucked the Justice League <laughs> and people prayed to them, like that was real, that was their shit. But then you think of like the Judeo-Christian guy, whenever something bad happens in your life, what do they always tell you? It's like, oh, he's got a plan, he's got a plan. God's like Jason Statham, he's got a plan, you can't see it. And then you have questions, you're like, oh, what about starvation in Africa? He's like, I've got a fucking plan. It's all part of the plan. I think that Greek and Roman gods make so much more sense when bad things are happening in your life, right? Your wife cheats on you with your best friend, takes the kids, takes every dime you've ever made. And you're like, oh, what God would allow this? It's like Zeus. Zeus would totally <laughs> allow that. He thinks it's funny. like. <laughs> You'd never have these huge metaphysical questions like what God would allow war? The God of war. <laughs> the war God. He's the one. <laughs> I was raised, you know, in the Catholic church and uh, they, they're really like anti-gay in my small town of like, you know, 6,000 people. Not the most progressive town <laughs> in the world. And uh, I'm sweating so much. <laughs> Real comedy. <laughs> But they would always, it's funny whenever the, the Catholic Church ever comes out against gay people, they always use the same couple arguments. And the big one they always have is like, it says you can't lay with another man. It says that, it's in there. And it's like, yeah, but that doesn't say no butt fucking. Like, <laughs> I hate to be a real stickler for the rules. Lincoln lawyer, I object. But that doesn't say no butt sex. What if God just doesn't want you to have like a loving, caring relationship with another man and lay down with him? What if God's just into like rough trade gay sex? That's it. That's all he's into. Like the standing 69 that two guys can do where they're like, but 
blowing each other. And they're just like, is this okay, God? And God's like, yeah, yeah, oh, galaxy, stars, nebulous. That's how it all happened, man. You guys are super fun. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Take care of yourselves. Hampton Yout, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>